welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today is another edition of Forage Friday, but it's going to be a little bit different this time. I am not going to spotlight a plant, but rather a method of preservation for future use in different forms. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is creating a tincture like this one. Tinctures and extracts are great ways to preserve herbal material that you've foraged for in your homestead or on other properties that you know of that are safe to forage from. Creating a tincture is quite simple. A tincture uses alcohol, usually a 80 proof vodka or higher or grain alcohol of a 190 proof if you're going to be using fresh plant material. If you're using dried plant material like this solidago I have harvested and dried, you can use the 80 proof vodka and it will work just fine. But if you're using fresh plant material like this wild lettuce that I just harvested, then you're going to want to use the higher grain alcohol so that it doesn't spoil. You can get molds and bacteria if you're if you have too much water in your alcohol tincture. Okay, so it's really, really, really easy. If you're using dried material, you're gonna fill your jar about halfway and then cover it with the alcohol. You always want to have all plant material submerged under the alcohol. If you're using fresh plant material, you're gonna fill it about three quarters of the way up. So any size jar works well. Um, I was really happy that Ryan was able to find me these amber jars. I have not found them since. If anybody finds these, uh, let me know where I can get some more because I think these are great for using for preserving herbs. Whether it's putting your crushed dried herbs in the jar to protect it from the light or if you're making a tincture or extract. So tinctures, I've got this one here and you see it's starting to, it looks like it's pretty low and you see some material of the plant material risen above the alcohol level. So this is a tincture that needs to be topped off. This has been going for a while now in my cabinet and it is an alcohol tincture and it is ghost pipe, Indian ghost pipe. Now I'm not going to talk specifically about the uses of the different plants today. I'm going to just talk about the process of making a tincture. So once you have your herbs and alcohol in your cabinet, you're going to want to make sure that you keep an eye on them and stir them. Um, if you have a metal lid on your jar, do not let the alcohol come in contact with that metal lid or it will corrode. It is better to use these plastic lids if you have them. You can also put a layer of plastic between your metal lid and your jar. I'm just always real careful not to let the materials touch the lid and cause any corrosion. So this is a tincture that's been going for a while. I'm gonna, I tapped it off and I'm going to watch it another week or so and then I'm going to go ahead and strain it. This tincture here is a tincture that is a little fresher and a little newer it's only a couple of weeks old and I want to really tincture out as much as I can. This is lion's mane mushroom and I really want to get all the medicinal effects from that so I'm going to let it go longer but I also will take it out and stir it every couple of days. This here is a finished tincture. This has already had the material strained out. This is solid ego tincture from last year and what I, the reason why this is in a colored jar is because I'm storing it long term in this jar. But for dosing it out, I use these, these bottles. So these have a glass syringe so you can dose it out. And so I'll just drop that in my mouth or in a drink or a beverage. If I'm having a beverage, I can just squirt it in there. And I can use this whenever I need goldenrod support. Um, you can also find jars that are blue for sale and those also block out the light in the UV and preserves the life of the herb. So I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to take some of this fresh wild lettuce I just harvested um, from the backyard. So it's clean. I shook all the bugs off. And um, I shook the seed heads off to promote more wild lettuce in the area it was growing. It was a good spot for it to grow, so I'm happy to have it take over that area. 
So I'm taking off my leaves. So I'm just gonna cut them up into my jar. And I'm gonna keep filling up my jar until it is about three quarters full. I am also including flowers in this tincture. You're gonna wanna do research on whichever herb you're using as to which plant material you can add to your tincture. This wild lettuce is gonna have some of this young stem added to it where the blooms are. And then I'm also gonna add all of these leaves along the stem and I'm gonna chop them up as much as I can before putting them in. All right, so once my jar is about three quarters full, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it all the way to the top of the jar with the alcohol. So once you have it filled up, you wanna shake it really good. If you have a protective plastic layer between your lid, you wanna shake it really good. And then you're gonna put it into a cool, dark closet or cabinet to allow it to release the medicine into the alcohol. This process can take as little as two weeks or as long as six to eight weeks, depending on the herb. So if you have a specific herb that you're wanting to work with, you need to do your own research and find out how long is the best amount of time for that herb. Now, extracts. It's important to remember not everybody can consume alcohol. Um, whether it's for med medical reasons that you cannot consume it or religious reasons or because you're a little kid. Now I have taken alcohol tinctures and, and um, evaporated the alcohol out and added honey to it to be able to use it for the kids. But it was a lot of extra work. So what we're doing today is we're going to make a vinegar, a vinegar tincture. It's not really a tincture. It's an extract. So a vinegar extract. So we're gonna use this dry goldenrod, solid ego, and we are going to fill our jar up halfway. Because remember, if you're using dry material, you do it halfway because it will need room to expand. Now, with some plants, you wanna use the whole plant. Some plants you wanna use the root, some plants you wanna use the flowers, some plants you wanna use the bark. So you really need to know the plant before you start making your own tinctures. Make sure that it's a plant that you're familiar with and you have properly identified and know which parts of the plants to use and which is the best way to tincture it. Now I already know Solidago is good to include the stems. So I'm gonna cut those stems into my tincture as well. They have lots of benefits in their stems as well as their leaves. And the flowers, of course, are good on this plant as well. So it really depends which plant you're using. Um, do your own research on that. Some of these plants are plants that I've talked about in my Forage Friday series. And some of them are ones I will be talking about in the future. So keep an eye out for those Forage Friday videos. If you haven't already, make sure you ring the bell next to the subscribe button and that will make sure that you get notifications for every new video we put out. All right, so my jar is half full with my dried herb, and now I'm going to cover it completely with the vinegar. Now, for medicinal uses, I always wanna make sure I use my best vinegar, of course. Um, the only thing I would advise caution with is, um, of course, white vinegar is not a very healthy vinegar for consumption. So I always use the organic raw vinegar. If you make your own raw vinegar, that is great. But my caution with that is if you don't know the pH, if you don't know that the acidity is 5% or higher, you could risk having a ferment that goes 
in a different direction than you want it to. The, if the acidity is not high enough, molds and bacteria can grow. So I always use the store-bought that's been tested for its pH versus my homemade. Now I use my homemade for lots of other things like salad dressing and stuff, but for medicine that I plan on storing long term, I want to use something with a known acidity. So all I do now is fill her up. And this is going to take about, oh perfect, I had just enough vinegar. So this is gonna take about two weeks for this one to extract all of its goodness and remember just like the alcohol you don't want to touch a metal lid with vinegar either so that is going to have a plastic lid put on it as soon as i'm done filming i also would like to tell you about another tincture or extract actually the only ones that are actually called tinctures are the ones made with alcohol but i'm giving you some alternatives if alcohol isn't the right choice for you all right for the third and final type of tincture or extract, I'm going to do some dried elderberries. Now, I grow lots of elderberry bushes here. We have tons of elderberry bushes, but we have a diverse ecosystem full of birds. So I actually still have to buy my elderberries off of Amazon. So I will post a link down below to organic dried elderberries and they're great. I use them for all of my elderberry syrups. Um, and in case you didn't know, if you shop using one of my Amazon links, even if you buy other things other than what I've recommended in the link below, you will actually be supporting our channel with a minor percentage that will go to us. The price of your product does not change at all. It just helps us out in a big way. I have my elderberries. They were gonna plump up quite a bit, so I've got a little bit less than half because I don't want to run out of room. And what we're adding for this one is glycerin, vegetable glycerin. It is a food grade, non-GMO vegetable glycerin. It is very sweet and it does the same job as the other two items we talked about, but it makes it really easy to smooth to go down for a child. So I like to make a vegetable glycerin extract if it's something I know I'm gonna need to use for the kids now I make a really awesome elderberry syrup so I won't need this very often but the nice thing about making it as an extract is it has a much longer shelf life than the elderberry syrup that I make so this is going to be great. All of these that I made today are gonna to go into a dark, cool closet, and they are going to be stirred every other day or so. And in about two weeks, I'll be able to either strain them off or let them go a little bit longer and extract more. Um, it depends on the herb, it depends on how dry or wet it was, it depends on how often I stir it, and Basically, it's just the longer it goes, it's not nothing bad is going to happen as long as your plant material is below the surface of the liquid. If the plant material rises above the surface of the liquid and becomes moldy, or ha has like a fuzziness to it, then you're going to need to toss the whole thing. So that's why you keep an eye on it and stir it and make sure that it stays submerged. So once you have your finished product, you're going to strain it through a non-metallic mesh strainer and you can either store it in a amber or blue glass container or you can put it directly into your dosing syringe and make sure you label it so that you don't forget what it was. <laughs> I hope this has helped some of you learn how to make a tincture or an extract and I hope that you're able to start doing this with some of your forage finds. Thank you for watching Wholesome Roots. We appreciate everything that you do for us. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate you sharing. And go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.